My name is Ernie Schultz, and I came to work in the news department at WKY-TV in 1955. After one year at a new television station in Enid, KGEO. At that station, I worked a 60-hour week for $55 a week. So when Bob Gamble hired me at Channel 4 and offered me $85 a week for a 40-hour week, I thought that was wonderful. I could not wait to get to Channel 4 because it was the, the summit. It was probably one of the five best local television stations in the country and it was famous for its news department. Uh, Bob Gamble taught me everything I know about television news. He was a great boss, still a good friend of mine. And uh, the general manager, Norm Bagwell, was very supportive of television news, very supportive of me personally. We had a great staff down through the years. We had Bob Dotson, who went on to greater things at NBC, Bella Shaw went to the West Coast and, and uh, did her thing. Uh, but the people I remember the most are the photographers because our photographers didn't just shoot film, they tried to tell stories with film. And we had some great ones. Uh, Daryl Barton, Houston Hall, Scott Berner, Cliff Atkins, I could go on and on. I, I probably shouldn't have named just four because we had so many, but it would take me a long time to name them all. They were so good that we won awards for their work. We were the News Film Station of the Year several times. Uh, under Bob Gamble's leadership, we were the News Station of the Year uh, for one year. It was a great place to work, uh, working with great people, and we had some good times. Uh, Houston Hall won News Photographer of the Year, and Norm Bagwell said, uh, uh, let me handle the presentation. Just tell him to come in this station and come up to my office. So I got on the radio and told Houston to come in and see Norm. And there was this pause on the radio, and Houston says, what does he want? Norm Bagwell was a former FBI agent, and he had a way of looking at you that you thought he knew everything in your mind. Uh, I suppose he developed that in interrogation skills. Anyway, Houston came into the station parking lot on two wheels and came bursting through the door. What does he want? What does he, I don't know, Houston, go up and see. Oh, he was eating a cigarette as he tore out of the newsroom. Went up to Norm's office. Norm kept him waiting. Norm told me about it later. Norm kept him waiting for a few minutes and then led him into his office set him down, gave him that flat look, and asked him, Houston, what have you been up to? And Norm said, he started to tell me. So anyway, uh, Norm finally gave him his, the, the good news, and Houston staggered out. Norm Bagwell was very supportive of the news department, very supportive of me, me personally. Uh, in 19, 64, after Bob Gamble had left and after Dick John had left for Tampa to take over the Opopco station there, and we didn't have a news director, Norm called me into his office and said, Ernie, I'm going to make you news director if you'll do one thing for me. Quit acting like you know more than anybody else in the station. And I said I would try, and he said that's all I can ask. And he made me news director, and I did try. I don't know how well I succeeded, but I did try. News film was really more important to the newsroom when I was news director than the words, or just about anything else. I thought that news film, showing people the news rather than just telling them about it, was our strongest point. So we spent a lot of time and effort in film and uh, tried to get a different angle, a different view of everything and, and we were very heavily into aerials and I had an airplane 
And then I flew to grass fires and oil well fires and floods and even the McAllister prison break one famous weekend. And uh, we devised a way to drop the film next to the station so that it could go through the film processor by the time the photographer and I got back from uh, landing the plane at Expressway Airport. And my wife took a pillow and hollowed it out a little bit so that we could put the film in the pillow and then the photographer would drop it out of the airplane as I flew past the station. Well, one day we were coming back and it was during a period of uh, bomb scares. Uh, during the integration period for Oklahoma City schools, a lot of youngsters thought it was very clever to call the school and tell them that there was a bomb in the auditorium or a bomb in one of the classrooms because then it emptied the school and they got out of class and stood around outside and thought that was pretty neat. Well, coming back from one of the aerial missions, uh, I lined up to make the pass by the station. I saw all these people outside the station. And I thought, at last, they have recognized my aerial skills and they've come out to watch us drop the film in the parking lot so that it could get into the film processor early. And I was pretty proud of myself. And I dropped the film and went to the airport and came back in and I said, so you finally realized just what we have here, did you? No, Ernie, we had a bomb scare. And the entire staff was ordered out of the building while they searched for the bomb. In fact, one of the policemen, when he saw your airplane uh, coming right at the station at a very low altitude, reached for his pistol. And then someone said, no, no, that's not a bomber, that's Ernie. And I was very pleased that they had done that. And it became, you know, less of a thrill but uh, anyway, and speaking of um, aerials, I stayed with the airplane a little too long. Uh, Channel 9 got a helicopter, and they didn't use it particularly well. I didn't think they used it any better than I did my little 170, Cessna 170, but they promoted it, and they had a tremendous promotion campaign. Chopper 9, every, in between every element of programming it seemed to us. Here was Chopper 9. And uh, so we finally had to get a helicopter more for promotional reasons than anything else. And that brings to mind the story of the time that Bella Shaw and a very, very attractive uh, female photographer, one of the few on the staff, uh, was sent to a, an oil well fire in Northwest Oklahoma. The helicopter pilot uh, tell, told me the story after the event, after they circled the fire to take their aerials, he landed and they got out. They were both very attractive women. This was at a time when Charlie's Angels was very big on television. And a deputy sheriff came up to them and they said, hello, and I'm quoting the helicopter pilot now. The deputy sheriff says, hey, I, I, and they said, we are here to shoot the uh, oil well fire. And the deputy sheriff said, I, I, oh, ha. and they walked up and shot the oil well fire and came back and thanked the deputy sheriff, whose jaw had never closed, according to the helicopter pilot, from the time he saw them step out of the helicopter till the time they left. And when they said goodbye, the helicopter pilot, uh, the uh, deputy sheriff said, I, 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 at a more serious level, I've already told you how much I appreciated the leadership of, of Norm Bagwell. Well, it was more than leadership uh, at one point. Uh, in the middle of the Watergate crisis for the Nixon administration, the networks were hitting him pretty hard and accurately for all the things that were going on and, all, and especially the cover-up. Uh, on our local newscasts, we usually had sections of national news, and uh, we would report the same facts, usually uh, from AP. And Oklahoma was very, very much in favor of the Nixon administration. They had uh, voted for him overwhelmingly and supported him entirely. And as a state, 
was pretty were, was pretty much convinced that the whole Watergate thing was a, a, a put up by the liberals. And so when we reported the facts, the, the testimony and the in the hearings and the, the, the break in and the whole thing, uh, we got a lot of phone calls saying, you know, he's a great president, back off. And we said, thank you for calling. But uh, I am convinced that Norm took a lot of pressure downtown, Chamber of Commerce, maybe some other places, advertisers and whatnot. He took a lot of heat and in a couple, only on a couple of occasions, he hinted at that, but he never once told us to back off. And uh, for that, he won my, not just my respect, but my everlasting love. Uh, I, I think he was a great guy and a great general manager and a great person. Daryl Barton was probably the best of all the really good uh, photographers that we had. And he cared very much about his film. Uh, one day he was, he was, it was on a weekend and he had some really good film and he had to get it through the film processor and get it on the air that day, right away. And we could all run the film processor, though we had somebody who, who did it full time during the week. So Daryl slaps the film in the film processor and the dry box went out, blew a fuse or something. And the film started to come out and there was no dry box. So he couldn't let it go onto the take up real wet because it would stick and all kinds of terrible things would happen. Well, it just so happened that the dressing rooms were just down the hall from the film processor room. And in the dressing rooms that day were about 20 wrestlers, professional wrestlers, getting ready to tape about 10 or 15 shows with Danny Williams. And uh, the dressing rooms were something. Uh, they were filled with tubes of Max Factor uh, makeup because the wrestlers provided tans to their entire body for each program because the natural human skin color was terrible on uh, television at that time. We all had to wear pretty heavy pancake makeup, but they had to wear it all over their body. The uh, dressing rooms, after they were through with them, just smelled terribly. Anyway, Daryl runs down and gets somebody to take uh, a member of the staff to take the end of the film as it came out of the processor and start down the hall with it. It would dry in the air. He ran into the wrestler's room, these were large, uh, very athletic men, and said, everybody out. And he drove them out of their dressing rooms into the hall and, and ordered them to pick up the film at a, about 10 foot intervals and march down the hall behind the one in front of them and here were these 10, 15 guys in their wrestler trunks and uh, carrying this film down the hall. Then they would turn around and come back down the hall until all 300 feet or 400 feet, however much Daryl had, was out of the processor. And then they had to stand there and hold it until it dried. It, it, was, it was incredible. You, you had to see it to believe it. One of the high points of the day during the workday was uh, a touch football game, which we usually played around noon uh, during the after the noon news and before the afternoon got underway. And everybody would pile out and uh, uh, Ray played with the news department. Ray Summers, who was the film processor, he played with the news department and uh, he was a wonderful split end. He could catch anything, throw it anywhere near him, and Ray would get it. And he was pretty fast and he'd outrun a lot of people. But uh, just about everybody in the news department at one time or another uh, played on the news department team and we played the stage department. And they claimed to have beaten us regularly. Uh, but you know, there's no record of that. So I don't know whether it happened or not, but Jack Ogle played with the uh, newsroom team he was a very fine anchor one of the, and a great guy. One of the, um, everybody liked Jack, uh, but he was a little slow. He was a basketball player, basically. He was very tall, and uh, that's where he really shone as a, as a high school athlete. Um, when I told them that uh, 
the station in Enid that I was going to work at Channel 4. My boss there, Casey Conia, advised me not to go. And I said, why? And he said, well, old Pubco will never pay you what you're worth, but they're such a good company, you'll never want to leave. And I didn't for 25 years. At least part of what Casey told me is true. It was a good place to work. We had the best of everything, and we usually had it first. Um, color television, radar, color film, CP16 cameras, color film processor, the load. Everything we needed, we had, thanks to Norm Bagwell and, uh, after he left, Lee Allen Smith. Very supportive of the news department. And probably one of the best blessings is that when I went to work there in 1955, television news was being invented. And it continued to be invented the whole time I was there. And I was a part of that. And, you know, not many people are blessed to that extent, to the extent that I was blessed coming to work at Channel 4 at the time I did.